Hey there everyone, my name is Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Let's see what's on the bench this week. This week on the bench, while we are finishing up some of the preparation work for lighting, we are going to get into some lighting work. We are going to be specifically working on the effects for the nacelles. We're talking about the chiller grill startup, where it goes into warp. We're talking about the bizarre collectors, where they do their cool little kind of uh, pulsating effect. We're going to get some blinkies in. That's going to be fun. But uh, when it comes to preparing the kit for lighting, just want to give you an update on the window situation. Windows are done on everything except for half of the secondary hull on the second kit and then the neck parts. I have, on the secondary hull part, I've got all the windows drilled, but I have to go back through now with the very sharp number 11 and clean up all those windows. And I'm not too worried about the neck covers because those are literally the last part that goes on in the major construction of the ship. So I've got some time to deal with those and there aren't that many windows on those particular parts. So we're gonna be uh, getting some lighting. That is exciting. We're not gonna be necessarily installing the lighting into the nacelles, but we're gonna get those circuits up and running, tested and all that kind of stuff so that you'll have some flashy, flashy fun to see in this update. So let's get right at it. But before we get started, why not take a moment and click the subscribe button. And while you're here, click on that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. So let's get started on getting some lighting effects set up for the nacelles. And we're going to start with getting the Bizarre Collector LEDs ready to go. We are using three 5mm chipped LED lights for the Buzards. Now, when we set this up in the nacelle, we're going to have to run the leads for these LEDs through the light blocking wall. That's going to be a little bit tricky to set up, but we're not going to do that yet. We're going to do that when we hardwire everything into the model. But for now, we're going to use just our uh, connecting wires to uh, just clip onto the leads so that we can get everything set up, tested, and make sure that all the program is working the way we expect it to. But just so that you're aware, this will be the piece that goes inside here. It was hot melt glued in just for some positioning, but I've taken that out. These will be clustered in threes. We'll go through that and uh, we'll be connected to all the appropriate wiring on the other side. One of the other things I will need to do when it comes to part preparation for lighting is that these connect to the pylon like this. So the outboard side is perfectly fine. It'll sit on there really nicely. I'm going to need to modify the inboard side because if I put this on here, you can see that the wires are in the way. So I'm going to need to remove some material on this part of the nacelle so that the wires can freely enter the nacelle. Also, let me put this piece back on just for a moment. You'll notice that there is this location strip that goes all the way across, which is great because you want to make sure that they are located properly on the pylons, but it raises up much higher than it needs to. And in order to lay the LED strips down in there nicely, I might just trim that down a little bit. We'll see. I haven't decided yet. Uh, I didn't do that on the last Enterprise E, um, but it is very, very fiddly working in these nacelles with that they are split uh, side to side like this. If it was the Enterprise D, you'd have the bottom piece that you can use as a tray to lay down all of your LEDs. That's why I think it would be great if somebody could develop a 3D printable kind of sled that would have your wall in here and then a base of, on which to build up your LEDs that could just fit into one half, go onto your pylon with all of your LEDs in there, wire everything up, and then just put your other side on. Now, obviously you would build it into this half because it's harder to get that one in and around. You just put this piece on. But if you could just build up everything in here on a sled that could just fit right in and then put that on, that would make life so much easier. 3D designers out there, if you want to do that, I'm sure you would have some business. But let's get these hooked up and uh, get them all tested. So what we have here is one side of the ship's Buzard's 
set up in a test rig. All I'm using are these jumper wires to connect them. I'm not doing any soldering at this point and they're connected through the breadboard to the Arduino. Currently the power on board the Arduino is powering them. However, when we get the entire model going, we may be looking at powering direct from the power source line rather than taxing the Arduino on that. That's something we will play around with depending on what kind of a load we're dealing with on the electronics. But what you can see is that we've got these pulsating kind of effects happening in these buzzards where uh, they are pulsing on and off or they are switching to an amber color um, giving that effect. And when they're bundled together inside the buzzard collector and maybe we have some diffusion going on in there, not maybe, definitely, it's just a maybe of how we do that diffusion, they should look really nice in there and we should get that kind of a plasma pulsating type of effect going on really nicely. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna get three more of these hooked up to the same circuit because we don't just have one, we've got two, one on each side. So I'll get those hooked up and see how that plays well together. And now you might be able to see we've added to our set of circuits going on here. So we've got the two sides of the Buzzard collectors and now we have two chiller grills that are wired up and all into the same breadboard running off of the same Arduino unit. So these, now they're just on a cycling pattern at the moment, but when it, the ship starts up um, or when you want to activate it, we'll see how that all works out, the ship will flash to warp. Now this might look very white on camera, but these are blue in person. The uh, big bright flash is a little whiter, but um, these are definitely blue chiller grills that you are seeing here. So when you activate warp, it'll ha give you a burst of light as the ship goes into warp. And I believe we'll probably get sound effects going along with that too. So we've added a flashing circuit to the mixture here and now. Buzzards, warp chiller grills, and flasher. This is one of two flashing circuits that's going to be on the Enterprise E. There are 10 strobes altogether, but broken into two separate circuits. Six of them are going to be this one. There's four on the nacelles and two elsewhere on the ship. And then there are four other flashers which are on the sides of the saucer that are at a different rate of speed. So those we will worry about later, but this is for the nacelles and the other ones that match it. So we're going to get a whole ton of these wired up because white 0402 SMDs all together, we need 10, sorry, 10, yeah, 10 strobes. And then we also need eight that are just constant on. So 18 per ship. We're going to go through a whole pile of these on these two projects. So in this mess of wires, we have everything that we need lighting wise for the nacelles on one of the ships. So we've got all six flashers. There's going to be four in the nacelles plus two more flashers on this circuit. Then we've got two um, constant ons, one on each nacelle. We've got the buzzards and we've got the chiller grills. So that's everything that's going to go into the nacelles. Now I'm not sure if I'm gonna be starting to get those in or not, but at least we will start getting the nacelle parts and pylons ready for the light to be installed. Going handheld for this one, because I wanna show you as well as possible the test fit on the three LEDs that are inside the Buzzards. Nothing is wired up, nothing is permanently installed. This is just a test fit to make sure that the firewall for the lighting and the LEDs all fit in and look like the positioning will be good. Which, if you look this way, you just can't see those LEDs. Turn it this way, you can see the LEDs, which look exactly like the Buzzard collectors in a bunch of the illustrations on the Enterprise E. So let me open this up and show you what's going on so far. So we open this up. Again, it's just test fit. This is what's happening on the inside. So we've got the light blocking wall that we created earlier, and we have the LEDs running through the wall. You can see the perforations in this one here. The LEDs have not been installed yet, and these are just sitting in for kind of test fit purposes so I know exactly where they are going to go. 
I'm going to make sure that I put some insulation on these leads on this side of the wall. The wiring is all going to be done on this side of the wall, which is going to be on a side that is uh, going to be blue inside for the chiller grills. These will be trimmed up and wired up. Uh, that mess that you saw with the breadboard, that won't fit into a cell, so everything has to be properly wired up. So I'm going to start working through that process on this first Buzard uh, setup and just work my way through making sure it all works properly that the way I want to wire everything up and the way that I'm approaching this actually does work the way that I anticipate it to. To say getting this wired up was tedious and a struggle would be an understatement. Working with the solder iron so close to that plastic wall with metal leads running through it, it is definitely a challenge. But we got there on this first prototype version and uh, that wall is a little bit warped but I think it should still fit and should still work inside the kit. We will have to wait and see but this is uh, up and running so that's a good thing. Now we will consolidate the power feeds going to these are collectors. Right now I just have the three individual negatives and the three individual positives running back to the breadboard, but we will get those consolidated down. Uh, but that is all I want to do tonight. I've been up much longer getting this working than I wanted to be. Lighting mock-up is being done on the nacelle right now. We have our warp chiller grills lighting in and we have our buzzard lighting in. Now, none of this is permanently installed. In fact, it's essentially just shoved in there for the purposes of this testing. So a few things just to be aware of. Nothing is aligned properly as far as the lighting. I will probably want to try to get these buzzards uh, back a little bit further. We'll have to play around to see how the effect looks for the actual final placement, but they're not in their final spot. The uh, Chiller Grill LED strip, again, I kind of just shoved it in from the top once I rubber banded the two halves of the nacelles together and just kind of sat the Chiller Grill cover on top just to get a good idea of how it was all going to look together. The light blocking wall warped a little bit when I was soldering the LEDs in place and uh, heating up the shrink tube, that kind of thing, but it looks like it is doing its job in preventing too much overspill of light from one half to the other, so it looks pretty good. Something else to keep in mind is that there is no diffusion in the chiller grills or the Bizarre collectors yet, so what you are seeing is literally a raw lighting test. So you're going to see absolutely every single hotspot because there's nothing blocking your view of the LED. So we will put appropriate diffusion inside here to make sure that we are uh, seeing as few of those LED hotspots as possible. Now, it's a little bit of a different story in the Bizarres because you do kind of want to see that going on inside. Um, you do kind of see the light sources on the Enterprise D. You don't see that so much on the way that the Buzards show up on the Enterprise E, say in first contact. You really do see that plasma kind of churning light effect. But um, if you're seeing those items inside that actually show up on any of the schematics that the guys uh, who were working with Paramount on this stuff did up, you actually, I showed earlier, you see those kind of units in there. And so that's kind of nice to be able to see a little bit. But we will play around with just how much diffusion is going to be necessary to make it look the way it is supposed to look. So I think that this is a really good first round lighting test. And it's nice to get that first bit of really cool lighting happening on a model. That's always a great thing to see. Again, nothing is permanently installed. And if I move this around too much right now, the chillers or the buzzards will just go out because the wires are just kind of stuck into the breadboard. If I was to touch any of that, you might lose one of these uh, just because this is a very tentative, temporary setup. But it is looking good. And I think that is a great way to end the week. And that's going to be it for this update from Canadian Starships 
on the bench this week. You know, some weeks we get a lot done, but it doesn't really look like a whole lot, or at least I don't think it looks like a whole lot. But this week, it definitely looks pretty cool, getting the lighting testing done on those nacelles. It's really nice to have some tangible results, some flashy lighting results that you can look at and go, ooh, ah, and see how nice it looks. Now, it's Thursday night. That's when I usually wrap up these updates, get the last work done, get the outro filmed, and get everything edited, uploaded, so that you have it for noon on Friday or at least that's the goal. Now, it was a year ago today that you guys got me over that 1,000 subscriber count for my birthday. It's my birthday tonight right now, and you have also added 290 new subscribers since then. That is absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much for helping me grow this channel. And I would love to be able to say that I've reached 2,000 subscribers by my next birthday. That would be pretty awesome. So. If you have enjoyed this update, make sure you hit that like button. If you're new to my channel or you haven't done so yet, why not hit that subscribe button today? You'll make me very happy for my birthday if you do. But for now, my name is Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Have a great day, everyone.